The goal of this video is to provide an intuitive understanding of what a rotation matrix is and how it can be used for reference frame transformations. We'll be going over the definition of a 3D rotation matrix, their applications which include Euler angles, quaternions, spacecraft attitude control, and more, and their implementation in software. The animation is an example of a rotating reference frame in purple, continuously rotating about a constant axis of rotation. So at each time step, the rotating frame of reference corresponds to a rotation about the axis of rotation with an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. And the white reference frame here is the inertial, which is non-accelerating, frame in this example. I also wanted to give a little sneak peek of the reference frame animator class that I have that I use to create these animations. It is a great tool to be able to visualize what's going on with rotations, specifically with spacecraft attitude control. And I'll be sharing the software on GitHub in the spacecraft attitude control series. So as a fourth video in this series, in this one, I'm going to be going over the rotation matrix and how it relates to reference frames. So a loose definition and the way that I like to think about 3D rotation matrices is that they are a 3x3 matrix that encodes a rotation through some vector in 3D space about some angle. Now this vector is usually called the axis of rotation as can be seen here on this plot. So for the animation, each frame had a rotation matrix that encoded this constant axis of rotation and some angle between 0 and 360 degrees. And rotation matrices can be used in sequence to encode multiple rotations about multiple axes of rotation. And these axes of rotation are usually the body frame principal axes, which are the X, Y, and Z axes, and which is how actually Euler angles are defined as a sequence of rotations about the principal axes. Now, rotation matrices can encode either active or passive rotations, where an active rotation is defined as rotating or moving a physical vector, where in this case, this vector V is rotating to this vector V prime, or there can be passive rotations where you move or rotate a reference frame, in this case, where this XY reference frame rotates upward to X prime and Y prime. Now, it's important to understand the difference of these two and what is going on. So on the left is an example of an active rotation of the vector V by the angle psi to the vector V prime. V rotates by psi to V prime. And now here, take note of the angle theta, which describes the angle between the reference frame x-axis and the new rotated vector v prime, so that angle down there. And on the right is a passive rotation, where the reference frame is rotated by the angle psi, and the vector v doesn't move. So that in the x-y frame here, it is rotated upward to get to x prime and y prime by some angle psi. And again here, take note of the angle theta, which describes the angle between the rotated reference frame x-axis and the vector v. Note that an angle theta is equal in both cases. This means that in both cases, the result is that the vector and the reference frame have the same orientation with respect to each other. And when you put this into software, you actually don't have to worry about these details, but this is still important to understand, and I will still mention it whenever I talk about rotation matrices in the software videos. So for applications of rotation matrices, I'll be using an example of a spacecraft attitude control simulation where the spacecraft initially begins tumbling, so it has some angular velocity in all three axes, and uses a control law to align itself with a local vertical, local horizontal, or LVLH reference frame. The simulation needs rotation matrices to be able to calculate the orientation of the LVLH frame, which is a target at each time step, in order to calculate the error in between the current body fix frame to feed that into the control law. Now, rotations can also be described as Euler angles, as you can see in the bottom plot here, or quaternions, which I'll be making videos for in the future, so stay tuned. An attitude control is not limited to spacecraft. It is also necessary for a aircraft, including airplanes, drones, robotics, and many other fields. So this slide just gives a sneak peek to how these reference frames rotations will be implemented into Python, specifically using NASA's Spice software with the Python wrapper SpicyPy. And if this doesn't sound familiar, I'll have links in the description where I cover how to use the Spice software in Python, and it's very easy and simple. And this code snippet here is converting from an inertial frame to an earth-centered earth fixed frame which is what i use in order to create the ground track plots and again i'll have videos in the description for those too if you're interested 
So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you like the video and to comment to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. In the next few videos, I'll be covering the principal axis rotations and how to implement them in the Python, which will feed into getting into Euler angles, quaternions. And this is a bit of an intro to the spacecraft attitude control with Python series that I'm going to be working on. So yep, yeah, that's it. Leave any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.